Okay, everybody. Well, you've seen the scrapping of the car, and you've seen what it brought, and this, that, and the other. Well, now for the now for the reasoning behind all this. I'm going to pass it out there. Um, actually, somebody from YouTube that I know personally, it's local, knew the situation that was going on, this, that, and the other, and they went, you know, hey, uh, you really ought to make a video, you know, saying this, not asking, but saying it, you know, this, that, and the other. And, you know, he throwed me five bucks and told me to give it to the guy. So, you know, you know, it kind of comes down to this. He, he is in a bad shape and he really could use a little help, you know, but I'm not asking anybody to do anything, but it's one of those things. If you're one of those people that want to, you know, we'll, we may make an avenue for that, but mainly the video is I'm gonna explain the whole situation of what's going on, just kind of let you know the background. You know, I'm not out here bumming for money, so, you know, we ain't going there, but you know, like I said, if you feel that you just absolutely have to, you know, it's real simple, like get it, you know, we can do it a hundred different ways and get it to him, but he's dug himself into a hole, my friends. He had a, had some children that was on his wife's side of the family that they took into their out, took into their home. There were some bad situations going on in the family, so he took them in to keep them from getting split up. There's four of these kids to keep them from getting split up and stay custody. Okay, well that that was you know that's you know a good thing. It's a noble thing for a person to do. But um, the thing was. You know, the extra money needed to care for him, the fact of having to actually move and get a larger place. You know, he doesn't own his own home. He didn't, he, you know, he's renting. So, you know, his rent went up. And everything is that and the other, and everything went up. Well, it don't take long for you to start, you know, the wheels start spinning in reverse, you know. And it's one of those things, you know, he did it for, did it for some kids. They did it for, you know, for some children. They didn't do it, uh, you know, out of stupidity like out here, buying everything that ain't tied down, things like that. So, you know, it kind of, it's one of those situations where if he'd have got himself in this kind of shape over a, another situation, I wouldn't be out here to, to help and doing what I'm doing. So I'm gonna tell you now what I'm doing. You've all seen the Dodge. Okay, the Dodge car, um, we split this car in I think it was 98 maybe. I can't remember anyway. We, we bought the car for $700. We uh, split it $350 a piece, okay? Well, I got the car back and the agreement was I was gonna give him the $350 back for the car. You know, his half, I was gonna buy him out, that's fair. He's had it, he's had the car, you know, for 14 years. And I'm giving him back what he put into it. That's pretty good money, keep the car 14 years and get your money back out of it. So, you know, a lot, some people, a couple people have said, you know, I was screwing him, I was ripping him off, I was doing this, that, and the other, but here's the deal. That green marquee and seen me scrap, that green marquee, happens to have um, happened to have major catastrophic engine problems. Um, he drove it and let it overheat and overheat and overheat. I replaced that um, that line underneath the uh, intake, fixed it, but damage had already been done there from heat cycling too much. You know, it's an aluminum headed engine, so there you go. Well anyway, he uh, proceeded to keep driving this car and he started smelling antifreeze and it was using water and it got hot a couple times. Well, anyway, to make a long story short, the heater core, which he'd already replaced once, it ruptured, it was ruptured. So it was, he was cooking this thing, frying it. And I truly, to this point, still don't know exactly what was wrong with the car, but I do know, well, I know what was wrong with it. I just don't know the exact root cause. Either both head gaskets were badly blown or both heads were badly cracked. Don't know which. But I'll tell you how I come to this conclusion. One, it had no compression. It was running on just a few cylinders. We had it running, and then it, it, it quit, and it literally quit when it lost all compression. It turned over, it sounded like a stretched out rubber band. Okay, well, the, uh, the car, of course, you know, at that point, it no longer ran. Now, I knew it had no compression. It's pretty obvious. Well, I um, further figured out that it was a, a water jacket crack is where the problem was because I tried while, while it was still running I actually tried to put water in this thing and it was building so much steam so much pressure that you just couldn't burp it out you couldn't get it full of water just impossible well when I cut the exhaust system to get the catalytic converters out of it when I did scrap it the exhaust system was full of water I mean just poured out like you'd been running the water hose in it which pretty well told me that it was busted into the water jacket so, anyway, could have been the block cracked for all I know, but it's on both sides, you know, so, but anyway, 
make a long story short, then, then Annie Epps changed again. He had a storage shed. Okay, the storage shed has $500 owed against it. They've already actually, the, the place has already foreclosed on this forest, for the storage shed. And they've already removed some of his stuff out of it. So, but anyway, it's gonna cost $500 to get back what's left and there's some important things in there to him. And there's some things in there that, I'm not gonna say they're important to me, but there is um, one, there's a few things in particular. There's some uh, Hoyt Axton recordings in there that are the original reel-to-reel -reel tapes. His father and Hoyt Axton were friends. And there's some stuff in there that was never released. I mean, some rare shit. There is, uh, his dad also sang years ago, and there's uh, some cool, some real cool recordings. He, his dad sang Early Morning Rain one time, and I don't know, I like it better than the uh, actual one you hear all the time, so. But anyway, that's Side's point. There's stuff like that in there that you just cannot, absolutely cannot replace. <laughs> And I'm hoping that stuff's still in there. I'm hoping. So I'm gonna pay the $500. But the deal turned out to be that, you know, I was gonna give him $350 for the car, you know, for the Dodge. Well, let me just, okay, I'll give you all the background. Let me just tell you what's going on now. I was gonna give him $350 for the Dodge, buy his part out. He had a $300 title loan on that Mercury. I was gonna scrap it out, attempt to pay off the title loan. And then uh, basically just shit to rest and pay off his storage bill. So basically, what it comes down to is I was going to scrap the Mercury and pay off the storage building, and I got the car. Is what it comes down to in the end, you know. Which has turned out it's it's going to wind up costing me a little more than the three hundred fifty dollars to do it. But you know, what's friends for? You know, that's what they're for. You help when you can. But he's got still yet. He's holding solid ground now. I mean, he's making what his outgo is. He's got moved to a place of better affording and things to this nature. And, uh, you know, all this, that, and the other. But he's still got an $800 um, title loan on his wife's car. That's the only vehicle they've got that runs now. And, you know, a lot of him is going to say, why don't you give him his Dodge back? Why don't you give him his Dodge back? The Dodge is not in any shape to be driven. It needs lots of repair. Basically, you could take that car, put it into everyday transit, it might last a week. So, no, that's not an option. It would have done him no good. He has, doesn't have the money to fix it. And, you know, I'm not going to put the money in it to fix it, you know, if it's not mine, because it needs some pretty major things done to it. It needs brakes, complete, complete brake job. And when I say brake job, it needs rotors, drums, calipers, wheel cylinders, lines, shoes, pads, bearings. Yeah, it needs it all. It's it's all shot. So, you know, tires, I mean, it's, it's car set more than it's been driven for years. But anyway, that's kind of the deal on the whole situation. And that's why I've been junking this car. But as you have seen, you know, earlier in this video, you've seen how much this car brought or in the video before this or whenever the heck it wind up, however it winds up out uploaded but i scrapped this car out and i made this car bring more money than an average person scrapping a car would have got out of it the average person would have let uh i'd let about 80 or 90 dollars of that money i think i'd have to look at the papers and add it up but they let they would have let 80 or 90 bucks go with the car and it would have brought ten dollars you know so basically, I made the car bring an extra hundred bucks. That's what I did. You know, did I do anything crooked like uh, stick a water hose in the engine block or stick it in the gas tank or soak the car with water? Nope, I didn't pull any of the dirty tricks. You gotta puncture the fuel tank anyway before you take it. So the fuel tank was empty. The engine did contain the oil and what water, some water did get in it when it was running. It was milky, but you know, so it had some water in it, but I didn't intentionally put it there. I didn't stick a water hose in it and soak the seats like a lot of people do. But I did leave the windows down on it during the rain. I did do that basically because none of the damn window regulators worked. I wasn't about to try to dig the windows up out of the door. So, you know, the windows wouldn't even roll up down this car. You could push them up and down by hand. But I pushed them all the way down when I was stripping the car out to get some ventilation through. And uh, anyway. It got rained in, so I probably made an extra five dollars off of rainwater. I didn't even make that. There wasn't no way there's fifty pounds of rainwater, and I probably made an extra dollar off of rainwater. 
But you know, they ding you that much, you just don't know it. Their scales are off anyway. They get you for 100 pounds the second you go across it. But anyway, that's the, the gist of that. But like I said, if anybody feels you want to help him, uh, you've seen him in a video back talking about his car or something the other. If anybody feels a need and just feels they have to do something, you can contact me, we can make it happen, but I'm not asking anybody to, you know. We'll get him dug out somehow, you know. You don't know him from Adam, you know, he's my best friend, so I gotta do what I gotta do. I'm not made of money, but I can I can do what I'm doing today, and that's uh, driving right now. I'm driving to pay off the title loan on the car and get the title and the key, even though the car's scrapped. I did call this lady and told her what I was gonna do. I told her I was gonna scrap it. And you see that crazy damn mailman? I thought he was gonna come out in front of me. But I told her I, was gonna, I told her the sh condition, the shape he was in, this, that, and the other, and I told her that uh, that the only real option was to scrap the car and pay her off because the car wasn't worth fixing. And she kind of laughed and said, as long as she got her money, she didn't care. And she said, I was the first person that ever called her and asked her if it's all right to scrap one. They usually just done it and then never paid her. <laughs> but anyway, so we're going to go do that and we're going to go pay this, uh, this asshole with the storage buildings. Yeah, I've never been cussed by a preacher in my life until Monday. The guy that owns these storage buildings is a preacher. He does have a church. He's an actual preacher, or he calls himself a preacher. But I've never had a preacher tell me, tough shit, business is business. I'm tired of people trying to screw me over, is what he told me. And I'm not even, and you know, nobody's trying to screw him over. I called him and asked him, uh, literally, how much does he owe you I would like to pay his bill? Hmm. I've never had anybody I was offering money cuss me before. And I've never had a preacher cuss me, so. Well, I've never had a so-called preacher cuss me. Cause, uh, you know, I guess I could see a preacher if he's in his backyard and he stubs his toe going shit or something like that. But to the general public, you know, when he refers to himself as reverend, I mean, come on, enough's enough. But anyway, like I said, now you heard everything I had to say. I'm off here. Bye.